Physics students, good afternoon. Mr. Fuga here. In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, some problems involving forces acting on an object and Newton's second law. Specifically, this is geared to help you all with homework number five, which covers over those concepts. In this video, we're going to be looking at taking different components uh, of a value and using those to find an angle. So this will help you with specifically problem number eight. In problem number eight, you're asked to solve for what is the direction of the boat's acceleration. So just as a refresher, if you haven't watched the previous video that covers over problem seven, finding that acceleration, or you haven't solved for that value, stop, go back, work problem seven, and then come back here. Because if you don't, you're not going to understand where the values are coming from that we're going to be using, okay? So problem number eight is simply asking us what is the boat's direction, or excuse me, what is the direction of the boat's acceleration? So in our previous problem, we did some work and we found our eight values for acceleration. We had a free body diagram, and specifically, we had a few forces acting on our object. We had one that we called F1 that was out to the east, which had a magnitude of 31,600 newtons. And we had another force that we were told was acting in the northwest direction. We called that F2. It was 60,800 newtons. We were told at an angle of 45 degrees. Now, you'll probably be able to notice there's an imbalance of forces here. And so in the previous problem, we were asked to find how does our boat accelerate, okay? And we found a couple of different values there, okay? We found that we had an acceleration in the x direction of negative 0 0.509 meters per second squared by summing up the forces in the x direction, F1, and the x component of F2, and dividing by our mass. We also were able to find our acceleration in the y direction. And we were able to do that by summing up the forces in the y direction and dividing by mass according to the relationship of Newton's second law. And that value was about 1.92 meters per second squared. So here, we're going to use the components of our acceleration to find the angle of our acceleration. Okay? Something very similar to what we did with projectile motion and how we dealt with vectors there. It's just asking us kind of for a slightly different application. So here, I'm going to take those two values I'm going to write them out. Our acceleration in the x direction, negative 0 0.509 meters per second squared, and then our acceleration in the y direction, 1.92 meters per second squared. And we're being asked here to solve for what is the angle of our overall acceleration, meaning what is this angle in here? and we'll call that theta. Now we're told to make sure we answer in units north of west. All that means is that we're finding the angle that is north, so this direction, of west. So we're going to find this angle theta in here. So we're not going to add you know, 90 or subtract from 180, any of the things that we're used to, simply because of what the question's asking us. So I'm going to need a trick function here. So I'll write out the ones I know. So, ka, toa. Now, if I look at my triangle, I have a couple of sides, right? The opposite and the adjacent. If you solve problem number seven correctly, you'll also have what would be your hypotenuse. But here, let's say we don't know that, okay? So if I have the opposite across and adjacent touching sides of my triangle, I can use my tangent function. Now, when you use this function, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Otherwise, it's not going to give you an accurate value. So I'll write out my expression, tangent of theta, is opposite over adjacent. Now my opposite here was 1.92, so I'll plug that value in. We won't need to worry too much about the units here. And my adjacent was negative 0.509. Okay. Now, if I want to get my angle theta by itself, I need to do what's called an inverse, if you remember us talking about those. Meaning I've got to undo that tangent function to get theta alone. So to do so, I'm going to multiply by inverse tangent on both sides of my equation. That will undo or get rid of tangent on the left-hand side. And now we'll be left with an expression that looks like this. Theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 1.92 over negative 0.509. I apologize. Okay. So remember, when you plug this in, do not plug in just tangent. We have to plug in an inverse. So it looks like on your calculator, second and then tangent. Make sure the negative one exponent is there. Mm -mm. 
Now you're going to get a, cal a value in your calculator that might be positive or negative, depending on how your calculator is oriented to calculate direction. So what it looks like is I get a negative 75.15 degrees. Now, when you get that value, you're just ask, ask for the direction. Don't worry too much about the positive or the negative. I just want you to plug in the direction there. And here, my direction would be about 75.2 degrees, which does make sense because I'm on, more of my acceleration is pointed up in the y direction than it is out in the x, which means my angle should start to favor the y direction more. It should be greater than 45 degrees, which according to our calculation, is 75.2 it was. So hopefully that gets you started. I, mean, I would not advise you to start problem number eight until you feel comfortable solving for problem number seven. Yeah. Overall, I hope this gets you going in the right direction. Best of luck.